A number of years ago, a Chicago businessman called and said, I've just listened to your teaching called Hal's Best Kept Secret. Do you take teams to Israel? He said, I'll fly you and a friend to Israel if you do a little teaching there. And so this gentleman, whose name was Dan, flew myself and Easy, the president of Living Waters, to Israel. Just after we arrived, he called the hotel and he said to me, would you like to preach open air in Galilee? I said, sure. So we went to Galilee and it went really well. And then he said, how would you like to preach open air in Jerusalem? The preaching was fine in Galilee, so I thought it would be fine in Jerusalem. Things went really well until I mentioned Jesus. You are a foreign work for us. You are a foreign work for us. That's what you are. That's what you are. I don't want your bless. I don't need your bless. I guess everything you are present, everything you say. You come and you, you come to poor people, you try to make Jews Christians. That's what you try to do. God will pass over your sins if you trust in Jesus Christ. If you trust in Jesus Christ. The Messiah. Ah, we put this. Nothing stirs up demons like the name of Jesus. There's only one human being whose name has been used as a cuss word throughout history, and that's the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Jesus told us in John 7, 7, the world hates me because I testify of its deeds that they're evil. Here is a young Easy relating what happened. Now, I've been heading up evangelism teams for several years, and I've been in some very awkward situations. But let me tell you, this incident in Jerusalem was the most intense experience I've ever had. The worst part's what took place off camera. The man who was yelling and spitting at Ray looked over, saw that I was filming, and obviously not wanting his actions to be captured on tape, started to chase me around and try to get the camera from me. Now, I remember we're passing the camera behind our backs, trying to get away, and it was by God's grace we didn't get killed that evening. You know, Jesus said in Luke 13, 34, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. And it's amazing that after 2,000 years, you could still feel that same intensity in the air. Dan told us afterwards that he heard people saying they wanted to get hold of that camera so they could deal with me without it being filmed. So how do you witness to a Jewish person? Well, I'm going to give you three hopefully helpful tips, and then we'll look at three witnessing sessions with Jewish people. You're Jewish? Yeah. I'm Jewish. Well, I'm Jewish. I was brought up Jewish. Number one, set aside your fears. The average contemporary Jew is nothing like the spitting image you saw in Jerusalem, so you don't need to take a spit ducking course. As you'll see from these three interviews, the average Jewish person is very friendly. Number two, don't be at all apprehensive to mention Jesus. This is because most contemporary Jews are secular rather than religious. And number three, appeal to the conscience using the moral law and keep in mind that conscience is on your side. It's an ally right in the heart of the enemy. Now watch this. <laughs> oh, I'm not a Christian. You're not a Christian? Nope. Okay, you're not a Christian. Are you an atheist? No. And you think you're a good person? Oh, is this your wife? That's my wife. Are you allowed to keep doing this? I don't know yet. Is she giving you a dirty look? I'm unsure. Okay. Is she the boss? Yes. Yes. Okay, she said yes. Okay, you can join in and listen. I'm cross-examining him. I'm his prosecutor. Okay. All the one from you, Jeremy, is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. Can you give me that? Sure. So you've read the scriptures? Uh, you learn them in high school, but you know, in elementary school, but not like uh, religiously, let's say it like that. Do you believe in God's existence? I believe there is like a general force over there in the universe to define it as God or to define it like there is an energy. Do you know who Solomon is in the Bible? Of course, the smartest man in the world. He said this, God is going to bring to judgment every secret thing, whether it is good or evil. So fear God and keep his commandments. Are you familiar with the commandments, the Ten Commandments? Yeah, of course. Those are Jewish Ten Commandments. How many can you name? All of them. Let me hear you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't um, respect your mom and your dad. Don't kill nobody. Don't steal, obviously. I think you shall not carry the name of God for the vein, something like that. You believe in heaven and in hell? We don't really focus on hell in in our religion. But do you believe in heaven and in hell? I believe in in heaven, like the Garden of Eden. 
but we don't believe in a hell per se with brimstone and fire. So what's going to happen to Hitler? He'll kill six million Jews plus gypsies and blacks and... Yeah, but what, happen, what happens to him is that the, like the, all the, the retribution from everything that bad that he's done to other people comes back on him. So will that be a place called hell? You could call it a kind of hell. So you do believe in a place called hell? <laughs> well, it's a place of punishment for wicked people like murderers and rapists and people that tortured other people. And So obviously if, if there's a God, he must believe in right and wrong. Well, yes, there is right and wrong. So have you kept the law of Moses? I mean the Ten Commandments? Oh, of course, yes. How many lies are you told in your life? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so you lost count? Everyone lies. One doesn't like go through their life keeping count of how many lies they've told. Do you think God does? Probably. The Torah, you have basically two sentences that summarize the whole philosophy. The first one, it's don't do to your friend what you hate that people do to you. That's the golden rule. Do to others as you'd have them do to you. Exactly. And the words of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. And the second one that you have, it's basically a... Um, in Hebrew, it's called Derech Eretz Kadma Torah. It's basically speak about the way that you are acting as a person and the way that you are acting towards the world. That's 50 times more important than any religious that you can do. First of all, be a be good and kind human being, and only then talk about the religious. Which means, if you're not, if you're talk about religious, but you're not a good person, it's fake. It doesn't worth it. It's better to first of all be human and then talk about religion. So, are you a good person? I'm trying to be. How many lies have you told in your life? A lot. What do you call somebody who steals things? A thief. So what are you? A thief. No, you're not. You're a lying thief. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeremy, I appreciate your honesty. Is he allowed to stay? Yeah. He's not. Okay, Jeremy, have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. That's called blasphemy. Very serious. Are you thankful God gave you life? Yes. Thankful he gave you children? How many do you have? Just the one? Just the one. Are you thankful? Very much. Why did you use this name as a cuss word? It's very serious, Jeremy. Heat of the moment. Heat of the moment. You want to express disgust. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, you've heard it said by them of old, you shall not commit adultery. That's the seventh commandment. But he said, but I say to you, whoever looks upon a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Probably. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust besides your wife? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. She says yes. <laughs> I heard her say yes. When did you last look at pornography? A couple of weeks. So Ben, this is for you. This is not for me. This is for you to judge yourself. You have told me that you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart, and you've got to face God on Judgment Day, as Solomon said. If He judges you by the Ten Commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Guilty, innocent. Sorry, you know why? Why? There is level and priority for these commitments. Well, the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no adulterer, so no blasphemer. Like very old religious language that is not existed today. Today you need to find the common ground between what's happening realistically and what's happening in the Bible. So Jeremy, I'm not judging you, but you're not a good person. You're like the rest of us. By your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. <laughs> you got to face God on Judgment Day. If He judges you by the Ten Commandments, we looked at four of them, will He be innocent or guilty? Percent's a D. Yeah, that's a passing grade. No, it's not. A hundred percent's passing grade. You've got to be perfect in God's eyes, morally perfect, and you and I are not. So you'd be guilty on Judgment Day. Would you therefore go to heaven or hell? Wherever they send me. So on Judgment Day, you're in trouble? Mmm, I don't think so. Well, how are your sins forgiven as a Jew? Every year we have Yom Kippur, it's the Day of Atonement, and we go to synagogue and we list off all our sins and we fast all day long and we, pound, we, pound, we go like this for each sin mentioned. So you'd be pretty busy hitting your shoulder. Everyone is every year. When the blood was put on the doors, remember that? The blood of the Lamb was put on the doors and the angel of death passed over. First time. John the Baptist saw Jesus, the Jewish Messiah. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God provided a Lamb whose blood can be applied to your life so death will pass over you. You know, you said you committed a lot of sins and you hit yourself. Well, Jesus was hit on a cross by God 2,000 years ago so you wouldn't have to go to hell. 
That's what that cross was all about. I don't know if you've ever had it explained to you before, but you violated God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid your fine in his life's blood. That means God can dismiss your case once and for all because he provided a sacrifice through the death and resurrection of Christ. And what you've got to do, Amy, is repent and trust in him. I would like to invite you to come to a synagogue service sometime. Love to. Yeah, come on down and ask these same questions, tell them these same things, and maybe a rabbi could answer better than I could. Well, there's nothing to answer. You're going to die. You don't know where you're going to go. And I'm saying your sins can be forgiven because God provided a savior. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Any idea? I don't. Well, you do, but you've forgotten. 2,000 years ago, God became a human being, Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, see, I was, I'm was i Jewish. I'm Jewish, too. We this stopped good there. News. 2,000 years ago, we stopped. You stopped? The, the Messiah never came for the Jews. Yeah, well, let me finish what I was saying. Oh, okay. Because I'm Jewish. Jesus was Jewish. All the early Christians were Jewish. The first 8,000 were Jewish. It was in Israel, land of the Jews. He was the Jewish Messiah. You celebrate Passover, but they put the blood of the lamb on the doors and death Yeah, Passover. the Last Supper, Passover yes. dinner. Yeah. When Jesus came the first time John the Baptist saw him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God provided a lamb to suffer on the cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. Jeremy, you and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus came and paid the fine. On the cross, he cried out, It is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. If you're in court and someone pays the fine, the judge can let you go. He can dismiss your case. And God can forgive your sins in an instant. She don't like it. Because the Passover lamb suffered in that place and rose again on the third day. I'm closing in a minute, so, okay. You don't mind? You're doing good. Thank you. The Bible says you must repent and trust in him like you trust a parachute. Remember they put the blood on the doors? That was faith. Yep. They trusted God, the blood would let death pass they over. Passed over. When you apply the blood of Christ to your life, the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world, death will pass over you. God will grant you everlasting life because the law has been satisfied by what Jesus did on the cross. Now, I know you're Jewish, but you're a secular Jew. You're not really a religious Jew. So I want you to think about this. Think about the fact you're going to lose everything you love, your wife, your children. Death is going to take them. There must be an answer, and the God who gave you life provided the answer. Death has lost its sting if you repent and trust the Savior. Jeremy, I really appreciate you listening to me. You're Thank Jewish you. and you had the consideration and the kindness to listen to a Christian. Please think Tell me, what happened at the Passover? What do you mean? Well, you celebrate the Passover. Okay. The blood was put on the doorposts, the blood of the Lamb, mm -hmm. and death passed over. Okay. Well, the Bible says death is wages given to us by God. God's going to put you to death for your sins. That's why you die. The soul that sins, the Bible says, it shall die. God's given us the death sentence. And God promised he would deal with death, man's greatest enemy, and he did through the Messiah. He provided a lamb to suffer and die on the cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. So the God of Israel has provided a way for you to find everlasting life. So please don't be distracted. Ben, this is so important. I love you, I care about you, and I'm trying to tell you how you can live forever. The God of Israel has provided salvation for all humanity. Isaiah said, Ho, everyone that thirsts, let him come to the waters and drink. What, what do you think about what we talked about? In illuminating, enlightening. Can I give you a book that I wrote? A book you wrote? Yeah, right. I'll take a book. And by the way, Jeremy wasn't super tall. As I was, he was standing on a soapbox during our conversation. Make sure you check out the Living Waters podcast. And this is the Evidence Study Bible. It's everything I've learned in more than 50 years of reaching out to the lost. It's packed with information on apologetics, cults, evolution, atheism, and much more. Over 1,900 pages, including 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. And make sure you check out the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular tracks, including 50 Ten Commandment coins. Available at livingwaters.com. If you haven't seen Let Me Warn You of this poisonous doctrine, please watch it. It's very subtle. It's creeping into the church, and you need to be warned. You can watch it right now by clicking up to your left.